Hey everyone, welcome to episode 27 of the 1.19 Skyblock series. So we're gonna start right away at the Wolverine Trailer platform again. We're still missing sunflowers, proper ghouls and brain coral blocks. We got five villages this time. I've been AFKing a little bit longer. It was around like 13 hours. Okay, so let's check. So this guy has sunflowers, okay? We got the first thing already. Then we only have two left and we also got an advancement by all types of tall flowers from the Wandering Trader. Okay, apart from that, yeah, got the rest already. Okay, the next guy. So here we have proper ghouls. Awesome. Gonna buy some of those. And now we also get the advancement arborist. Buy all saplings from the one crater. Ooh, then we only have one left at this point. Um, was it again? Arborist here. We're missing only the brain coral block. Okay. Uh, apart from that, should buy the drip leaf again. Okay. Then next guy, brain coral block. <laughs> this is going great. <laughs> okay, finally got everything. Nice, completed the challenge. Okay, is it even worth checking the other guys? This point, morning traders don't really have purpose, I'd say. I mean, if you want to get more small drip leaf, I guess we would need to get more of them. Oh, but it's actually nice. No more FK finally the warning trader platform. Got all the 25 unique traits. Next, let's talk about the plans for this episode and also for the next couple of ones. But the next bigger goal that I have would be to start a new place where we have a storage system and a couple of farms like a sugarcane farm, melon pumpkin farm, maybe bringing the villagers over, dripstone farms, a lot of smaller farms. They don't cost too much lag all in one place. So basically start a base of my own, something similar to what we have here, just a bit more sophisticated with decoration and so on. Also, yeah, it's still bearable to play. Um, if you look in those chests, it's a bit messy, but it's bearable because it's my mess. <laughs> it's always way worse in a multiplayer server where everyone just throws items into random chests that are not labeled. Um, so there, immediately after playing for a couple of days, feel like we need a storage system immediately. It's not that point yet, but I feel like it would be definitely nice to, ha to have a yeah, proper storage system and also a nice looking place with decorations and so on. So obviously for the new storage system, you're gonna need a lot of hoppers and chests and so on. Chopping wood, um, yeah, it's not, not anymore one of my favorite things. And I definitely want to get yeah some sort of an automatic tree farm first before we would start building that new main storage. Then I also need a lot of decoration around. So I definitely want to use some grass blocks. So we need a dirt farm first and some sort of a concrete converter because uh, the new base will definitely use a lot of concrete. Okay, so we need to prepare the next maybe three, four, five episodes uh, before we can start the base project. Last episode, we already started yeah, thinking about how a sand farm with dispensers could look like. Plan for this episode is definitely to finish this project. Also had a greater goal in mind. I definitely need some yeah, TNT to blow up the locks for the automatic tree farm. So I was also thinking maybe adding a little creeper farm right next to the sand farm in survival. So we can yeah automatically produce TNT right away. Okay, that's the thing we're gonna do after actually fixing the iron farm storage. The iron farm is definitely a big success. It's always running and it happened the second time now that the storage is overflowing. So I wanna upgrade this now that we have comparators available and also the auto crafting table to automatic iron block crafting. And I was thinking we should store some of the poppies and the rest should be turned into bone blocks. So this way the storage wouldn't overflow all the time. All right, so I quickly build up the storage system here and put myself in spectator mode so I can easily show it. So yeah, first we got an item filter system here for the ingots and the poppies. Then the ingots go into the crafting table. It's basically just a system that blocks the hopper below the crafting table until it's completely filled here with ingots. And then, yeah, you take the iron blocks and just Send it up the dropper elevator again and put it into the storage here. Poppies, built it out. The next one I put into a composter and then the bone meal is also crafted into bone blocks directly. Yeah, we still need to wait for the next one to come in. There we go. 
Ja, and we get bone blocks that are stored in a single chest here. This is a lot slower compared to getting iron blocks, so that's why a single chest will definitely be enough. Let's continue with the coral based sand farming in creative. So at the end of the last episode, I was leaning towards making a clock based design. It seemed like the most promising to me, but I wasn't really sure if I might miss out on some really good trick that would make a detection based design better. So I asked for you guys feedback and you really delivered. I got a lot of good suggestions, tips and tricks and also fully working designs that I wanna show real quick. So here we got a detection based design that is working 100% reliably. It was made by 271 Anonym, but also got a lot of other um, designs. The issue with those designs here is that, as you can see, a lot of effort goes into making the detection-based design. So it basically works like this. We have the dead coral decays. We bone meal until we actually have a dead coral, we detect it, then we remove the water, and then we actually wait until the coral dies and then we just waterlog it again. So this would produce 140 cent per hour according to Anonym. Yeah, but as you can see a lot of effort goes into this. So what I already um, suspected in the end of the last episode, a clock based design is just less effort um, in order to get the same rates. So 140 cent power is nice, but I was looking to get something like in the range of 10,000 cent power. So I would need to build this a couple dozen times. And there were also a couple suggestions how to make maybe a simpler detection based design working, but no matter what, in terms of effort, it can't really compete with the clock based designs. Here we got, they yeah, actually a farm that produces 10,000 cent power and as you can see, it's pretty slim. Hardly any effort goes into building this, and it's also reliable. Um, it's just, yeah, when it comes to the build effort, much superior compared to all the ideas for detection based designs. Um, so that's why I'm probably gonna go with one of those. So this design here was suggested by Simonastas, makes 111 cent, according to my testing, per module per hour. So that's actually 80% as efficient. So if you just take this uh, to the Spencer module here compared to the detection based design, it's actually not much worse, 80% is efficient. Um, and of course it's way less effort. We actually power both dispensers here at the same time, just with the redstone line here. That's all we really need. So it basically works like this. We power both dispensers at the same time. Then the water is removed, unfortunately, because the update order, it doesn't uh, bone mill or bone mill first. So we have to put the water back. And when that happens, because the bone mill dispenser triggers for, uh, second, it can still happen that we generate corals. Okay, then we just have to remove the water again. So basically just trigger this three times. Then we need to wait like 32 seconds until all the corals die. Then we just water log it again. So that's all the redstone we need here. We got a clock here, triggers every a, a bit over four minutes. And then we just uh, extend this observer, pushes it into the other observer, which um, triggers it the first time. Then this one triggers as well, which this observer detects. So we get two pulses. Then if you pull it back, then we get the third pulse. So those are the initial three pulses. And here we just got a delay circuit that also gets triggered by this observer. Then after those 32 seconds, uh, get a yeah, amount of uh, items in there accordingly, triggers it the, the fourth time. So that's all the redstone we need here. And of course, you can easily turn this off by just adding like a yeah, lever here. This would be the off switch. So quite simple design. And of course, we can also still expand this. Uh, we can always go higher vertically. We could also rearrange the redstone here at the bottom maybe a little bit if this is even necessary, and also have a redstone line here on the other side. Then we could have another module facing this way. So there's yeah, a lot of ways how we could expand this and we just need this little bit of redstone here at the, at the bottom to trigger it all. Also the best block to have below the corals is actually the magma block, not the leaf block like I suggested. Uh, that my idea was that we don't want seagrass to generate there. The leaf doesn't allow that. Banger block does the same, but additionally allows coral fans to generate on top of it. So we have a higher chance that a coral would generate there. So that's where the magma block um, is best. This was yeah, 
suggested by Velisa. He also helped me a lot uh, with some code analysis, some precise timings and so on. So that's why I'm definitely going to use the magma block there. It has the downside that it actually generates bubbles, but if you time it right, you can yeah, work around this issue. There's just one thing about this clock design in particular, that it's not that great. It's using a lot of dispensers and also yeah, hoppers here in the back. Considering I'm really low on wood, I would spend my remaining wood on at least making all of those hoppers here. And we also have to fill all of those with bone meal, unless we add some extra redstone in the back or do it differently. It also require a ton of bone meal until everything is filled up. And that's something we can maybe improve. Moving chorus with pistons was also suggested multiple times to me. And that seems really promising because that means we don't need a bone dispenser for each spot where we generate sand. We can just generate all the dead corals in one spot and push them from there. There's just two downsides doing this. First one is every time we move this, the water gets removed. And also doesn't help too much that we can like short pulse the first water uh, in a row using zero ticks because it still destroys all the other water in a row. So it wouldn't be too helpful to do it like this. And the second problem we have is that we can't move live corals. Those get just destroyed. Only the dead corals can be moved. Bit of an inconsistency. Somebody actually at some point told me why that's the case, why you can move dead corals, but not live corals. Somewhere internally, the dead corals are categorized as stone blocks and somehow inherit traits of stone blocks. So that's why they are movable. A little bit weird, um, but well, still useful. I guess moving dead corals might not be intended. I still think, yeah. Would also be nice now that dead corals are movable, that live ones would be movable as well. But it's just not, yeah, not the case right now. So here we have a design that I quickly put together that's based on moving the corals. So what happens here is we remove the water, then we try to push over the corals and put the water back on this spot. And here at this spot we um, yeah, push first the dead coral out. Then we add water again, bone meal, and remove water again and just wait until the coral dies. Because we can't move the live coral, so we just have to wait. Um, and also have a buffer here in between, because an adjacent water block will also keep it alive. And then the next cycle we just push again. Um, so again we have a, like a 40 second clock. So this is quite promising. What I don't like about it is that we still need those dispensers here in the back. By the way, we're getting 137 sand per module. So module is basically every spot in front of a dispenser here. We got 10 in total. Um, so the only realistic way I see to make this work without dispensers is just use normal water regeneration. You just have this issue that yeah, the corals, at least the side fan corals, need to attach to a block here. Um, but at the same time, you would need this block here to be a water source, so the water can regenerate, or something like this here. That's why, yeah, you would need a block there to not lose the side coral fans. So what we can actually do is use the magma blocks again, which also has um, yeah, the possibility of corals generating on top of the block. But I don't really see a feasible way to get around having um, the bone mill dispenser here on the side, which allows um, the side coral fans to generate. So if you would replace this block here with some some leaves as well, you would still need the, the top dispenser here uh, because we can't move the live coral out. So we always need to remove the water with a dispenser somehow, unless we use some super complicated sponge tag where we need to somehow break the sponges again and so on. Uh, yeah, um, so we would always need one dispenser at the top and we can't use it at the same time for bow meal and water, of course, because it randomizes which one it uses. So yeah, whoop, maybe it'd be nice if we had a dispenser that isn't random, <laughs> where it actually prioritizes the, the bow meal in the first slot, but it just doesn't exist. Um, so I don't really see a way to make this work um, while not allowing yeah, fans to generate on the side and without having other huge downsides. Technically, we can also have a, a water source on the side, both meal dead, and hope that the, the coral generation spreads to this water source. We could 
remove again, but uh, then we waste so much bow mill on the other hand. So I don't really see a nice way to do this. But we could maybe do some quick test and just see what happens if all the, the side coral fans we generate just get destroyed. Of course, it would be a bit of a waste in terms of bone meal, but if you look at it, it seems like at least half are the, the normal type that is generated on top of the block. So I guess we would just do a quick test. Yeah, remove the dispensers here in the back, re replace them with water sources and see what happens in terms of the rates. So the rates this way are actually not that much worse. Instead of getting 1370 per hour, it's 1300. So actually not that much less. The reason why we're getting less is yeah, sometimes we generate fans here on the side and then we can't replenish uh, the dead corals here that decay yeah, as reliably or quickly. That's why the rates here with this module would be a, a bit lower. And also, of course, the bone mill efficiency goes down because sometimes we generate fans that just get you know, destroyed once we try to push them in there. Um, also, by the way, there is no water-locked block where water would flow to the side that I can attach a coral fan to. So this also just doesn't exist. So per bone mill invested here, we're getting 21 cent compared to about 36 with this design here. Because here we actually have the effect that sometimes one dispenser could generate multiple corals because we stack it horizontally as well. So right now, for the farmer head in mind, we we'll would definitely lean towards this design here. It's nicely stackable because the bow mill efficiency, I don't think, matters too much. So it would cost us 500 bow mill power compared to 280, which is, yeah, we could even make a small, more space bow mill farm next to it or a small skeleton spawner. So I think it's fine. Maybe in, in case you want to get a million cent per hour, this design might be a bit better because it's more bone mill efficient, but for getting like 10,000 cent per hour, I think it's still fine. So stacking it like this works pretty well, but I still gotta adjust it a little bit because we have one issue. So right now I'm just sending two pulses through the you know, server chain uh, tower here. And sometimes the sticky pistons drop their blocks and lose them. Uh, you know why? Yeah, so the thing is we get two pulses. Sometimes it can happen that the piston can't push out uh, the slab because it's completely filled with dead corals. And yeah, then one the coral decays and the second pulse comes in and then it pushes out the slab here. So we need to adjust this and yeah, power the piston here properly. Like a two redstone tick pulse. Oh, I should not. Just mess around here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, power the normal dispenser and the water dispenser separately. Okay, it's gonna be a little bit larger, but at least it's gonna be reliable. So, some proper redstone here in the back. Farm is working fine now. Getting 12,200 cent per hour and need to put in 500 bone meal per hour. So, I think the farm overall yeah, is pretty lightweight. Actually, not too much effort to build this. Yeah, definitely gonna go with this design here. Right, then I also think the nerf that was done to the dead corals was kind of okay. When we did the manual setup the first time, I said, hmm, that's maybe it might be a bit overpowered and fast. And then it was slowed down by eight times. I think this is actually yeah, pretty well balanced now. So imagine you would get 100,000 sand with this setup. I think it would be a bit too fast, but, but I feel like this is okay. I actually got some angry comments that blamed me that it's now impossible to get a decent amount of sand. It is so much effort, but I feel like it should require a little bit of effort to get a ton of sand. So, yeah, getting 12,000 sand per hour with this setup, yeah, I think this is okay. So to make the fully automatic TNT farm, we need two more things. We need a source of gunpowder, and we need a crafting system combined sand and gunpowder. I think there's like two options for yeah, getting gunpowder, really. Uh, we could either make a creeper farm in the overworld, or we actually make a ghast farm in the nether. We would have the advantage if we get some ghast here as well. So we would need to find a location where we have a soul sand valley in the nether, and then on the overworld side of that, we would need a, a warm ocean biome. I think this should definitely be something that can be found. And another yeah, benefit of actually AFKing in the nether and running this in the overworld would be that we also could make a small skeleton only farm on the side. It's the other mob that spawns in a soul sand valley. Uh, we could get our 500 bone meal this way. I think, yeah, that seems like something I want to do. 
Looks like I was actually wrong about this. So I checked pretty much every warped forest biome within about 2000 blocks of 00, zero and none of those really linked to a warm ocean biome on the overworld side. Just usually zoomed in, switched to the overworld and yeah, no warm ocean biome even close. They're actually quite rare. It's no problem to find a cold ocean, lukewarm ocean. The warm ocean is, is pretty rare, at least in this seed here. So looks like Ghast from is off the table because I don't want to go out four or five thousand blocks in the nether just to get this to work somehow. That's actually really unfortunate. I was so confident that we're gonna find a good location that I already made the ghast farm. So solved all the little issues using jack o' lanterns in the floor to prevent the skeletons from spawning, did all the optimizations. I was struggling with the item collection. <laughs> Um, yeah, it looks like we're gonna need a creeper farm. Well, at least the TNT crafting system that I made will be needed. So we're gonna have two inputs, one for gunpowder and the other one for sand. There's also a safety switch in case we're running low on either. It's gonna turn off the clock here in the back, like right now it's the case. Also, it won't matter if we have red or yellow sand, uh, both will be accepted for the crafting recipe, so we don't even need to filter out the sand. Okay, I'm gonna put some in there. So basically here in the back we got a 21 tick clock. And then we of course need to trigger the gunpowder side five times and the sand side four times. Yeah, also in the right order. So we put in yeah, gunpowder sand, gunpowder sand and so on. In order to trigger this five times, you have this system here. We detect the repeater turning on and off. So there's already two pulses. And we multiply that, um, yeah, just triggering a piston. So it gives us two outputs for each time. So when it extends, it retracts. And here on the right side of the gunpowder, we just have this extra system to get one more pulse. And then we need to unpower the hopper below for a brief moment, just the right time. So that's going to be the crafting system. But now we need a gunpowder farm. Um, so creeper farm, what are we going to do? Of course, I definitely want a creeper only farm. We need to get roughly to match the sand production 16 17,000 gunpowder per hour. Um, well, let's see. Either we try to just make a, a flushing farm, or is there any other ideas we have? Hmm. Maybe using boats is actually a good idea, similar to what Methods did on Psycraft. So there we build a farm where yeah, the spawning creepers are immediately caught by a boat. And then because the boat was uh, waterlocked, ejected the creepers again and sent them into a portal. But maybe we could adjust the design a little bit and yeah, don't use portals, keep it as a one-dimensional farm. So all the creepers that spawn will be caught by the boat and then just suffocate inside of a block. They also, yeah, while they're in the boat, they wouldn't count towards the mob cap. So this could also be a quite efficient farm. You could have the hopper directly below that catches the gunpowder. And then of course we need to prevent the spider spawning. But spider is actually 0 0.9 blocks tall. So if we place a trapdoor here under the block that suffocates the creepers, um, then we also prevent the spider spawning. Then yeah, we could have those 3x3 three three modules directly next to each other. We'll probably need a dispenser to accurately place the boat so all eight spawning spaces are covered. So the dispenser perfectly um, dispenses the boat in the center of the block. Probably have to do that, which is a bit of an effort. Yeah, but it's not like we need anything crazy, like 200,000, like on Psycraft or expand the farm and get millions of gunpowder. All we need is like 20,000 or a bit below. Yeah, definitely would have the benefit. We could build the farm really low and get crazy spawning there. I think I'm just gonna try it out. Looks like the concept is mostly working, but I already see the issue here. So if the boat is completely filled with two creepers and a third one spawns, then obviously it can't be picked up and maybe they would start walking at some point and maybe yeah, also run into another creeper, which then causes maybe the boat to be pushed over. It collides somehow. That's what I'm worried about. And yeah, once the boats are getting moved, um, it's pretty much over. <laughs> then we got a chain reaction and uh, more and more creepers will spawn, push more and more boats probably. 
Uh, this would be an issue. So, yeah, I think we have an issue here. But I'm gonna at least test this. So I'm gonna probably add like two more slices here on the side. Um, yeah, add the stairs around, so we got complete darkness in there. And then just do a one hour test and see what happens. I've been testing this creeper farm for about one hour and it seems like it's viable. The creepers were not able to move the boats at all. So the boats are still nicely lined up. So that's, yeah, really good news. Unfortunately, we actually have a ton of creepers that would spawn outside of the boats and count towards the mob cap. The mob cap pretty much is always filled by those creepers that spawn on the outside and couldn't be picked up anymore. Nevertheless, you actually get a decent amount of items. We got about 20,000 gunpowder per hour. So we're just, um, yeah, powering the dropper line here on the side. So the items are picked up by the yeah, hopper below the boat, put into the dropper, and then shot into the water stream. So that's how we would get the items out. Um, but I feel like we should maybe try one more idea. So the problem is really that those creeper creepers are not picked up. So I was thinking, uh, let's turn this off because of the noise. We got additional mobs. So I was thinking, um, if we have a creeper spawn right here in the middle of a block, maybe we could pick it up with the minecart. That doesn't work. But there's one more trick we can maybe do. We can put a boat here and pick this up with the minecart, and then maybe the boat picks up the creeper, so like this. Then we would just have blocks above that would suffocate the creepers. So this way, yeah, this should also be cleared. I'm gonna spawn the second creeper. We get it all gets also picked up by the yeah, boat. And eventually, if you have extra creepers, it's just a matter of time um, until those we would be picked up as well. So we would have yeah, rails every third block. And still have the other suffocation on top. And then we could maybe just have hoppers below the rail that transport the items over. So then, uh, we, we, yeah, use the capacity of the, bo of the boats a little bit better uh, because we con continuously try to pick up the creepers, which was a, a problem we had here. So it didn't work that nicely. So this actually seems a bit more promising. Just one issue here. Mm. So we have a working farm again, and this time is actually super promising, does it exactly what I want. So it's only a roughly a, a 12 by 25 farm, not large, but we're getting exactly, is it, 16,600 gunpowder. Just what I wanted, it's perfect. Also, if you look at the mob cap um, top, yeah. Most of the time it's actually empty, you know, we got one creeper, now it's three, they're immediately picked up. So it does exactly what I wanted. If you take a look inside, all the creepers are pretty much immediately picked up. There's so many minecarts around now. It can still happen that we got additional creepers that wouldn't get picked up. Those are the two or three yeah, that fill the mob cap. But yeah, this does exactly what I want. There we got one. Yeah, it usually doesn't take long and they will be picked up. Okay, so this is awesome. Also, this would actually be scalable, since the mob cap is not filled at all. Lag is a bit of an issue. Not with the small one, so no problem there. So we have about 2.5 MSPT according uh, to the tracker. Or sometimes actually three coming from the minecarts and the boats. So three MSPT with a small one, it doesn't matter. So this is definitely not like scalable to uh, 200 by 200 farm. If lag wouldn't be an issue, it would actually be super fast. If you would you know, go for like 200 by 200, uh, all the spawning spaces that are available around the player, then technically this would yield more than a million items. Uh, maybe even two million items, which would be crazy, but I don't think, uh, yeah. This would work out of the lag. But I could easily make this a lot larger because, I mean, we still have performance left to use. Could probably even get up to 300, 400 thousand items per hour. And I have some ideas to make it yeah, more minecart efficient as well. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of that can be done, but I'm happy for this. So, this is exactly what I need right now for the Skyblock series. Just getting a bit excited what you could also do with the farm. All right, definitely gonna build this one. All right, so I still gotta adjust this a little bit and put everything together. So, we need to uh, yeah, deal with the items somehow. So, we got the hopper lines here at the bottom. So, the plan is just to have like yeah, 
two droppers there and some observers just can replace those blocks here and like have a clock running dispense everything into some water and then flush it somewhere then uh, that basically to the storage or the, the crafting system would be the plan also actually you still gotta expand the side platform here is interesting because the hoppers below are actually transparent and as you can see here sky level six uh, if you're actually below um, the lowest block you can place the light still travels below and the skylight would actually reach inside through the hoppers there you can go up the rails above then yeah here on the side so as you can see we got a sky level of three there so that's why I gotta expand this platform on the side. It's not for the spawn items, it's actually reduce the, the light level. Alright, so I'm gonna put everything together so we can start building this at the beginning of the next episode. There was a lot of creative today, but a lot of people are also interested in that part. So we have to figure all of this stuff out. Uh, I think it would be not that interesting if we would just build cookie cutter farms. So yeah, since we are now at the stage, we worked hard to have all of those redstone components and I like playing with redstone. It's gonna happen a bit more often that we're gonna spend um, yeah, more time in creative because that's just how I like to play the game. But of course, we're still gonna do a lot in survival. Alright, so hope you enjoyed. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye!